Altex listed One Logix recently reported strong performance for the full year to May, lifted partly by the recovery in the sectors in which it operates and new clients. The company grew its headline earnings per share by 61% to 19 cents for the year to the end of May. Operating profit rose 43% to 74 million rand. Revenue increased by 41% to 701 uh, million rand from 496.7 million rand in the previous year. The company provides logistic services through its subsidiaries such as vehicle delivery services. Uh, One Logics market cap 262 million, so smaller Altex stock, price earnings 6.9, dividend yield 6.1, although actually it's paid from share premium, so there's tax issues there as always. Keith, let's start with you. Uh, really, their, their, their key business is it's their vehicle delivery and their commercial vehicle delivery, which is move those big trucks which they move vehicles around, etc. Predominantly South Africa, but moving into Africa as well these days. I suppose if you, uh, you've got the contracts, nice moat in the sense that those things can't be cheap to buy. You've got the networks. So a fairly protected business. Well, uh, obviously it's leading on new, new vehicle sales. Now, in vehicle sales, we, we know, are also a, a cyclical uh, indicator. Uh, in a way, th they deliver it before the car's even sold, so they're a leading indicator of a leading indicator. But, uh, <laughs> but it, it is fairly <laughs> variable. Um, that's, that's the problem where a large part of your business is tied into the cyclical industry. Um, you, you're going to have quite, quite a lot of profit volatility. Um, that said, they're a dominant player, so at least they have, have a bit of a moat against them in that mm. player, uh, in, in that industry when, when volumes drop off, they will still probably maintain, if not grow, their market share. And while vehicle delivery services actually did quite well, PostNet actually, revenue was down, so that's slightly disappointing, Anthony. Yeah, it is. I mean, I think um, Simon's point that it has a moat, I don't agree with. I think in the vehicle delivery services business, I think that they have the potential to have pressure on both sides of the margin. I think that the vehicle manufacturers are dominant in this market so they can kind of define what your margin is or what your setting price is. And I think the barriers to entry are quite low. So I, I think that the business could be susceptible to competition. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite easy to set up a trucking business um, and even a specialized trucking business like this. Um, again, also the earnings visibility is very dependent, as Keith says, on new vehicle sales, and it's a bit difficult to kind of forecast where sales are. Having said that, I think that it has a quality management team, this business. Um, PostNet, I don't think, fits within the group. It's a franchise business. I don't see, you know, I would, SME business yeah, compared to I'd like to see them specialize, uh, become a specialized trucking business or logistics business. Um, they talk about getting into possibly into the tanker business bulk, uh, specialized bulk distribution um, of commodities. Uh, that would be more interesting and more exciting, more focused niche player. The problem with that is they actually a couple of years ago they exited that area. They had a discontinued operation which was operating in that area and they found the margins were too constrained. So they've been exiting a whole bunch. I mean, they, they had a whole lot of, of, of news. They still d deliver newspapers around the country. They still do international magazine imports. They've also got Atlas panel beaters. Now, Keith, you said to me there's a logical reason before we came on air. I mean, I mean they, what, they the panel beating their trucks? I don't get it. Well, if you're maintaining a huge fleet of delivery trucks, and uh, Atlas panel beaters, a panel beaters typically has quite a, quite a high fixed overhead, you've almost got guaranteed volumes. So you're just capturing, capturing your repairs uh, sort of opex costs in house, well, and and then and then if there's uh, any tertiary uh, or th third party sales, you're getting margin on that. Um, it was uh, I, th I think what they did uh, I could stand correct on this. At, at this panel beaters was a distressed business yeah. because it didn't have enough mm -hmm. uh, volumes, but they've got the guaranteed they volume. Then. So they just bought yeah. it in house for next to nothing, and they kept trying. Would you agree with that, Anthony? That that is the logic behind it. Ah, uh, big yawn. So what? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I mean, in terms of so what? So what yeah. does interest you, you when it comes to you? One logics. Um, if it was very attractively priced, um, we would be interested in it. Uh, we think that um, it's not. It's on seven times earnings. If mm -hmm. it was on four times earnings, we'd, we'd have a look at this thing. So not hot for you then? Not. It's had an incredible run. Um, it's, it's one of those that is sitting very much in the lukewarm camp because I like management. Uh, I, I think it's a quality team and they, they will hopefully extract a lot of value from the business. But I don't see a lot of synergies beyond maybe uh, panel beating within the, the sort of splitting parts of the. Of, of, and where do you go when you're almost like a dominant player in the niche yeah. 
market. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit on the fence entirely on this one. But Simon, I mean, uh, you, you know, I know that it's, we've got a very good network into Africa as far as the DRC. Surely that puts it in a very strong position because this is what we want. We want to see um, companies heading... And, 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 and then into maybe the it's uh, maybe someone like Imperial or Supergroup or someone would look at it. I I, I, I look at them and I, I like the logic behind it. I like management, and I think to myself, I don't know where it's going to grow from beyond vehicle sales and a bit from Postnet, but Postnet's very very small. I think it's it's single digits maybe. Arguably, a uh, mature digits. business already. Postnet. Yeah, a mature business, and 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 the vehicle delivery. How many more cars can we sell in South Africa? Are we ever going to get to a million a year? In Africa, I'm I mean, not the, sure. the, the, that's where the volumes could come through. Though. Maybe, maybe that. It. Maybe it's, it's into Africa and they really need to grow that business. Can uh, you forecast what volume sales in Africa are going to be? You can ask some economists <laughs> who always get it right. Yes, <laughs> they, give, they give you two answers. I like, the, I like the dividend yield, but I would pass on it. Not okay, hard. so not hot for you? Not, not hot, hot for us. And lukewarm. Okay, let's so get into our hot. guest hot stock picks. <laughs> Antonia, let's start off with you. African Rainbow Mineral. We were speaking to a technical analyst a little earlier today saying this is actually a good time to buy ARM and it's actually looking better than the other commodity stocks. Yeah, the results are tomorrow. Um, we think that African Rainbow Minerals is as one of the lowest cost producers in the country um, with one of the best growth profiles. It's probably one of the best ways to play the resources stroke commodity scene. We think if you're bearish on the rand and if you are bearish on the dollar and therefore bullish on commodities generally, this company can do exceptionally well. We're forecasting about 30 rand in earnings two years out. June mm. 2013. Essentially, that's doubling. I think we'll, we'll do around about 15 rands of the earnings tomorrow. So we think earnings can double in two years. Um, put on 10 times earnings, 300 rand target price. Um, we think this thing is exceptionally cheap with exceptionally good growth prospects. Is it almost a little bulletin or angler, perhaps, without the, the, the geographical uh, diversification? Well, it's in the commodities that we really like. It's in manganese, it's in iron ore, it's in nickel. It's in platinum and coal, some upside in copper as well. Okay, no well, gold. well if I may just <laughs> point out something you said, if you're bearish on the rand and you're bearish on the US dollar and you're bullish on commodities and this is a stock for you, mm -hmm. but what if you, the rand doesn't actually weaken? And when you say bearish, what kind of levels are you looking at it? Because we, we're looking at an environment where the rand is going to be stronger for longer. Well, I think that's the consensus for you, but I think that we are 20 to 25% overpriced in terms of a purchasing power parity basis um, with no political risk premium priced in. We think that if it normalizes to kind of purchasing power parity and a political risk premium gets priced into the RAND, the RAND could lose 50% of its value. Yeah. So it could go from 7 RAND to 10 RAND 50 to the dollar. On top of that, if there's QE around the world, which we think is kind of the likely outcome, the only way to get out of the debt problem in, in the Western world is to kind of monetize the debt. So we yeah. think that that will cause people to invest in, in hard assets. Yeah. And that will be strong for, you know, that will create underlying demand for resources for companies. outside of the demand coming out of China. Okay. Keith, let's get into your hard stock pick. Ansys. Well, it, it's, we're looking at a, a company that's incredibly cyclical. It's boom bust. Uh, they're currently in the bust. Uh, that said, oh, that said, well, boom. <laughs> <laughs> well uh, they've, they've got a strong engineering part. They, they get their bread and butter from the local, uh, the local uh, railage in South Africa. And we're, interestingly enough, more, more rail uh, lies under the ground in South Africa than above the ground. Um, so they're also so quite in the mines. Yeah, in I mines. Think they've been buried. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but w w w you know they've got that. They've also got the defence part where they export uh, optical sites and their various other uh, other items. So we've got a we've got a group of engineers with a huge amount of intellectual capital that is not sitting on this balance sheet. It will never be capitalised, but it's sitting there. They will be spinning and returning, uh, r um, growing a return on equity when when the revenue starts to come. That's actually not why I like it. That just, go, that just justifies a, a, a nice valuation. Why I like it is it's got the continuous rope monitoring system. Continuous rope monitoring system is a unique approach where they, it's, it's simple, it's exportable to mines, deep level mines mm. all over the world. Uh, they've already tested it um, on Anglo Gold's uh, one mine. Yeah. They've got an eight orders uh, by now. I wouldn't be surprised if there's more eight orders out of Anglo Gold on this thing. It's exportable. They've got the patents. You know, the world's your oyster. So, how much this is worth is questionable uh, or arguable. Um, 
but I could I could tell you that it's got a lot of upside potential, and that's what I like. There's an so optionality. So hot for you, Ansys, and for you very quickly, uh, Ansys and Ansys Arm. like because the mine shaft is the bottleneck, so it works for them. Arm absolutely. Ansys uh, speculative. Uh, yeah. Uh, go big or go home. Very very speculative. Ansys, too speculative for you. No, we like Ansys. We yeah. think it has got a dodgy balance sheet, but the <laughs> upside potential is there in terms of the mine rep tester.